Hey everybody, this is Jake, and today I'm going to show you how I made this modern shoe shelf. So this project originally started with me making this out of some reclaimed wood, but it just wasn't turning out the way I wanted. So I decided to go with some black walnut that I got for a great price. I think this are, these are first and seconds and it was only about 325 a board foot and I couldn't pass that up. And for this project, I don't need perfect grain patterns. I just need something that's gonna hold up to the weather and be stable. So right here, I'm just milling up the lumber, running it through the jointer and running it through my planer to get these to thickness. These boards are gonna be for the bottom of the shelves. So now it's time for glue up. Uh, I kind of already got these clamps already set. And I got the idea for these clamps from Izzy Swan. I'll leave that link below if you want to check them out. This was the first project I've used these with. And I struggled a little bit with getting the wedge in with having these clamps so close. The wedges at the ends, they're not bad. You got to kind of get them knocked in with a little mallet so they're not going to move on you. And they stayed in position fairly well. It's where I put the wedges in the ends uh, to kind of lock everything in place. That was a struggle just to get everything lined up just right. And what I think I'm going to be doing is actually modifying these and putting a screw in the, uh, the end and actually make it adjustable that way so I can do this by hand instead of using wedges. But um, they're still nice and flat. Um, they work really well and I actually made these out of some scrap pallets I had. So. I'm going to just modify these, and those are, that's going to be a future video uh, coming out in the next few months, so make sure you check that out. So now it's time to mill down the wood for the frame of the shelves. I'm milling this down to about one and a half inches. And uh, we're going to then cut this to about one and a half inches tall. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and cut our dado in all these pieces to accept the shelf. One thing I did buy for this project was a dado set, and I just bought the set from Home Depot, the Diablo, and I'm happy with it. It does what I needed to do. Um, leaves a nice, clean dado inside. It's not like just using a normal blade where you got a lot of ridges from the kerf of the blade. It leaves it pretty flat for the price you're paying for it. So just ran all of these through my dado set, and once I had that, I'm going to go ahead and cut my 90 degree miter on all these pieces. So I'm just getting this set up and I mark each end of my board A and B. So right now I'm going to cut all the A's on this side of the sled. And once I get all my A's cut, I'm going to move the boards over to the other side of the sled and cut all the B's. That way, even if the miter sled is not exactly 90 degrees, all my miters will line up. So now that all the A's are cut, what I'm going to do is set up one of the cutoffs that I had from all those A's, and I'm going to clamp that into place to give me a stop to make sure I cut these all at the same place, which is really nice. It makes a nice, solid place for all my stock to stop on, and that way I'm getting a nice duplicated cut to the same length every single time. So after taking the panels out of the clamps, they were actually really flat. They only needed a little bit of touching up. And taking off a little bit of that glue, so I'm just touching it up. 
And I'm just going to cut these all to size. I had to do a little math to make sure that the position of the shelves would look right for where they were placed on the rack. So for the glue up on this, what I did was only glue the front edge and about the front third of the sides. That will allow some movement for the shelf when it expands and contracts and I don't have to worry about the shelf blowing out. I also left some space in the back between the back rail and the back of the shelf to allow for that expansion and contraction. For clamping I just used the good old blue tape because I had a nice tight fit and that held it together fairly nicely. Check my corners, make sure it's still in square so I'm not out of square here real quick. And then I also decided just to put a brad nail in each end and I don't think it was necessary in retrospect. And next time I think I'm just going to use the blue tape. It did a really good job at holding everything together. So now it's time to dado out the back legs so I just had a scrap the exact width of the shelf. So I'm just going to mark the location and then just draw that in to give me an idea of where that's going to go. So make sure that these are all square, line them up, and then use my scrap piece to give me my width of that shelf. On my first piece, I just made sure that this is the correct width for the dado to fit the shelf and compare it, and then I can go ahead and cut the rest. After getting the back legs all set, I'm going to go ahead and get these front legs in the right position. So again, I'm just using a scrap piece of the right thickness, and getting that to the edge, and then moving that from the bottom to the top, getting that lined up. I took my bevel gauge and got the right angle set up so I can go ahead and cut the correct angle on my front legs here. I took a scrap piece of wood that I knew was had a nice straight edge, put my bevel gauge right up against that, and just brad nailed that down to my sled. And that way, when I go to cut the dados and the front legs, I got the right angle.
for my brad nail holes, I thought I'd try a little bit different method. So I took some shavings from the jointer that were black walnut, and I just filled those holes in with that, pressed them down with my thumb and with the flat blade of a screwdriver, kind of got them in position, really forced them down in there, and then uh, just let those dry. And they actually turned out really nice. It worked a lot better than mixing that sawdust like we normally do. You can hardly even tell the holes are there. I finished this with some Danish oil, and after this I'm going to go ahead and put some polyurethane on it to give it some extra protection since it will be in the garage and shoes are going to be going on this as well. So that'll give it some protection from the elements and from what's going to be on it. But the Danish oil really brought out that grain. I really like how it looks. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, it's, it works well, it's nice and sturdy, doesn't move on me at all. Um, and it's a perfect place for keeping my shoes up off the floor and keeping them away and keeping uh, where they need to be. So if you like this, if you're interested in making one of your own, I'm planning on making some plans pretty soon and I'll be sure to let you know when those come out. If you have any questions about this or you have any ideas for me, uh, please leave those below in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you do that so you catch all my other videos as they come out. And this is Jake of All Trades saying we'll see you next time.